I'm calling this meeting to order. Welcome to the Cedaroli Rotary Club, the best Rotary Club in the? Today's invocation will be by Becky Eldy. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Rotary Club and the members here. We wanna especially give um, ask you to give your comfort to the Gansky family. And thank you for our speaker today, Sam Lowe, and the work he does for us at the state. In your name, amen. All right, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please join me in the four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And today's song is with Sheena. Of course, it didn't say Yulia here. I'm very excited about it. I woke up with this song in my heart. You were doing a round. Um, when Danny was sitting there all by her lonesome, I was going to give her a round to herself, but now it's not quite as funny. So I need uh, three groups. So we can do Danny's table and this table. You are guys of the green over there. And then you guys are what actually is purple. It doesn't look like purple in David's table, Charlie's table. And then you guys got the red because it's easier for all y'all to see. And then you, um, Sam, you, you guys can join in the red and then we're all gonna open in the blue and we're all gonna close in the blue. And you'll notice the last line is in capitals because we can end with emphasis and not in time. So we're gonna start with everybody together. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round. That was something real special. You can have a seat. All right, besides our program today, do we have any visiting Rotarians? Visiting Rotarians besides Representative Lowe? No, I see none. Do we have any guests of Rotarians? All right. Well, welcome to all of our members and our program. Uh, club business, last weekend we were notified that Rotarian Brian Gansky had passed away. And when there is more information about a service, Christine will pass that on to the club. A reminder that we're seeking nominations for our board vacancies in June. And you can see your email for the names of those who have already been nominated. 
Um, I've also heard a rumor that someone was going to nominate someone today during this meeting whose name starts with a T and ends with a K. Someone, anyone, nominate Mr. Mr. Teak. Thank you. All right. Teak Martin has been nominated by Mark Ben to be a director. So, and I hear he's he's in for it again. He's already served once. So I'm excited to uh, have you on board, Teak. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, Rick just said that the memorial service um, for Brian will not be held until after the first of the year. So we'll let you know when, when that is. I'm sure all of us will want to attend. Remember for people at home, you need to have the microphone to be heard. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, just a reminder, the chamber is looking for some uh, traffic control around the tree. I, I got further clarification clarification during the Christmas committee um, meeting the other day at the chamber. And apparently they had a lot of, um, of runners, or as we call it in the school district business, elopers from their parents. Um, so they are looking to have some um, extra people invest who are easily identifiable as non-creepers to be able to um, be around the tree and in that vicinity to make sure that Little children, if they escape from the parental units, they have someone to ask for help. Last year they had, I think they said six children who ended up missing during the night of the Christmas parade because it is dark. And um, we had a very large turnout for the Christmas parade last year. So, and if you are a business who usually does that parade, just a reminder, the applications are open. There's my chamber plug. All right. Um, just a reminder to mark your calendars now for the 2024 Rotary Auction. It's going to be on May 10th this year. Um, and the theme is Camp Rotary. And I'm hoping all of you are excited because you don't have to wear high heels. I know the men never do have to wear high heels unless you're David Fricka and you wear those one big wedge boots that are incredible. So I appreciate that effort. Okay, um, Becky Eldy has an announcement about the Christmas party. How many of you saw my email about the Christmas party? Just raise your hands. Okay, let me know if you can come. I need to give a head count, a, a really firm head count by November 16th, which is two weeks before the party. So make sure you let me know. And I'll send out another reminder in about a week or so. But it's December 1st, 5.30 to 6.30 is going to be our social hour. And then we'll gather everybody for dinner and we're just having heavy, heavy hors d'oeuvres. We do have a bar with beer and wine and um, probably the committee needs some help with some of that. So there you go. Oh, speaking of beer and wine, and I know Rick is going to go out and check out the storage unit and get all that. We need to have, we need to have a work party out there. That thing is a mess. Yeah. So I'll, put something together. I was out there stashing some of the centerpieces for the auction out there and could barely walk through it. And some of the stuff just needs to be tossed. There's exploded pop cans. It's ridiculous. And if we had about five, six people out there, it would probably take us a couple hours and we could put it back into the shape and condition we should have it in. So, all right. Any other club business or announcements? Anyone, anyone? All right, seeing none, let's do a raffle, Jeff and Becky. Hey, well, Jeff and Becky. Jeff and Becky. Becky Eldie's helping with the raffle. Woo! She looks surprised. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guess we got to turn this thing on. I can remember how to turn it on. Do you remember how to turn this thing on? There's a little switch. I know the. It is, but it's just, it ah, what kind of show are we running here? Yep. Oh, whoever pulled it out hit the switch from us, so it's partially not my fault. Okay. Red 24.
All right, green 50, five zero. B11. Yeah, good job. Yeah, should we do one more just to see if we get some enthusiasm? It's been very uh, underwhelming. All right, one, number one. Oh, we're even going to spin it. Look at that. Oh, we're gonna have to owe you the five unless you have change. Okay, so I guess that's it for that. All right, congratulations to all the raffle winners. Thanks for your enthusiasm. All right, so Sergeant at Arms? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so Go we're gonna it. hopefully do this kind of quickly because I know we have a, a big program. I'm going to, and I think you should give $5 for cutting me off. I'm well aware that, that, it's, that there, it's the first uh, one of the month. So birthdays, if you have a November birthday, such as myself, November 7th, that's $2. For, for you, yeah. An old pensioner like you can afford it. So uh, if you don't know if you have a birthday this month, that's also a dollar. Um, anniversaries, I think, are three dollars. So if you have an anniversary this month, all right. So Tuesday is my birthday. That's an important day. But there's also something else going on on Tuesdays. On this particular Tuesday, uh, it's election day. So if your name is on a ballot on Tuesday, you are immune. Congratulations. Thank you. If your name has ever been on a ballot, go ahead and pay a dollar because it's not on this year's ballot. I imagine you're very happy about that. It's a, and so we're gonna talk a little bit about the elections. So um, first of all, if you have voted already, pay a dollar. And if you have a ballot and have not voted yet, pay $2. In this, in this particular election, not ever. Well, if you're, <laughs> then at buck 50. Yeah, no, it's $2. You haven't completed the process yet. All right, so. Um, oh, well, okay, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you do that in a second. All right, so. This table, what is what legislative district does Cedar Woolley or most of Cedar Woolley fall into? Are you just how much money do you have in your wallet? How much I said this table, how much money do you have in your wallet? All right. <laughs> Nick, will you go pick up some money? So go ahead and pay a dollar for getting it right. What congressional district does Cedar Rowley fall under to most of, most of Cedar Rowley fall into? No, congressional. Second, let's so go ahead and pay it $2. Not you, because you're immune. All right, who uh, represents uh, this, this area in the Congress? Yeah, okay, so that's a dollar for getting that right. Good job. Um, you're not allowed to answer this. How many elective offices for the city of Cedar Woolley are on this year's ballot? How many elective offices for Cedar Woolley are on this year's ballot? Okay, and what are they? Okay, good, there's a dollar each for getting that right. Good job. And how many school board, how many school board positions for the city of Woolley, for Cedar Woolley are on this year's ballot? Good job. So you guys are paying attention. So I'm very happy to hear that. So um, I'm so happy that I'm actually going to hand the mic over to David who wants to find somebody. 
Oh, I, I think that Samantha Stormont needs to be fined. Her picture was on the front page of the Skaza Valley Herald for an, a major prestigious award that she won. And I think she should tell us about it. And I'll give a dollar for this as well. Okay. <laughs> you could read about it. Okay, so um, I was gonna give a, I was turn, turn this over to Happy Bucks. I was gonna give some Happy Bucks, but it sounds like my dad already uh, gave some Happy Bucks for the award that I got from the Bar Association last week. So I, I actually will still give 10 Happy Bucks for that. I'm very honored, if you hadn't heard, I got the uh, Hugh Ridgeway Professionalism Award from the Bar Association. It was a complete and total shock and I'm very pleased and very Did proud. you say professionalism? I know, right? So who else is happy? I'm happy because my granddaughter is the cutest thing on the whole planet. And my daughter posted her pictures of her and her little pumpkin with her dog and the little bumpy pumpkin she picked at the pumpkin patch herself. And I just melted my heart and it had a little drool on her face. If anybody else wants to feel that kind of joy, I'll send you pictures. You just have to ask, it's cool. You know, she is adorable and I just, you know, maybe that's why I'm so happy and saying this little happy little song is the whole week is great. So do you have some money? <laughs> I've got uh, 50 happy dollars. My uh, son and his wife uh, had a baby boy last night, seven pounds, five ounces. I have a happy 20 because I want to thank my team from um, last month who actually covered for me. I was gone three out of the four um, Thursdays that I was supposed to be here. So um, with gratitude, happy books. I've got a few happy bucks here. First of all, congratulations, Samantha. That's really cool. Uh, great, great recognition of that. And also, so... Um, I won't be at the Christmas party because I'll be on stage at McIntyre Hall uh, in the production of The Nutcracker. Uh, Michael and I have been participating for 12 years in this production. And uh, the, the uh, young woman who's playing Clara, uh, Torrance Stewart, uh, I remember her when she was a soldier and I think she was a mouse. And um, they've grow, they grow up and it's just really one of the most amazing things. And it always reminds me of Jack and Shirley McIntyre. Jack was a Rotarian here, being at McIntyre Hall with these kids. It's just really great. I got a happy five. My granddaughter was a baby shark and cuter than uh, Sheena's. Uh, um, was your singing ABCs? I got, how much, how much did you put in? I got, I got five here. I'll do 25. Do I hear 30? Do we have 30? We're going to go back and forth. Uh, I got, I don't know whatever's left here. Uh, Saturday morning, get on a plane for a couple of weeks in Glasgow, Scotland. Going to go see our youngest daughter who moved over there in August with her, uh, well, not quite fiance. They, he asked permission, but Anyway, it's another story, but, and uh, so we spent two weeks in uh, pretty much this kind of weather in Scotland, so, and uh, my grandson was a cute little trash panda, so. I can't afford to brag about how cute my granddaughter is, so I won't. Um, I am so happy to be in Cedro Woolly my rental anyway, even though I moved away in my main house, I had a sewer line back up and I paid a contractor a whole bunch of money to tell me I needed to dig it up. And so I went over there on my tractor and on Saturday and I dug it all up and I was talking to uh, Carrie Whalen at the city. Okay. I've never seen a, anybody in all of my dealings, and I deal with county officials and people all the time with my work. None, not one, has been as professional and polite and helpful as Carrie was to me. She, <laughs> I had this old crappy Orangeburg pipe. It's a 
asbestos or uh, not asbestos, it's asphalt. And it, it's not even round. And I said, do you have a fitting? Because I couldn't find a fitting to, to uh, connect to it. Oh, yeah, come on down. And she showed me, you know, she got me a fitting. And then she came over and looked at what I was doing, make sure I wasn't screwing it all up. On Sunday, she did this, okay? And she came over Saturday, too, because she was working, you know, just for a couple minutes, just to make sure I was doing it. And then I get a text this morning or yesterday, and she says, oh, by the way, we repaired the other side on our side of the fence for you, too. I I'm just so grateful. Okay. Well, just I think that's it for Happy Bucks. Just get out there, make sure you vote if you haven't voted, and always, you know, maybe go and thank the people that are willing to get out there and put their name in the hat and, and run for office because it's really important to what we're doing. And I think we found a new way to raise money in the club is the cutest grandchild contest. So I'll be thinking about how we can capitalize on that one for the auction. Let me think on that one. Um, so today's guest is Representative Sam Lowe, and we're going to have Julia Johnson, our mayor, come up and introduce him. Thank you, Ruth. Um, I just want to say that I'm very grateful that we have such great representation here in the Skagit Valley. Um, Senator Wagner, of course, but also our new addition in 2023, our 39th uh, representative, uh, state representative, Sam Lowe. And um, I got to say that Sam has been very responsive to Cedar Woolley. He has not only co-sponsored 48 bills in just a short period of time. I mean, you're talking just a matter of a few months, really, when with the sessions that they have going on. But he has also been very responsive to Cedar Woolley. If there's questions or concerns, I can pick up the phone and Sam is very responsive. But one of the first bills he passed, which I share everybody share with everybody, is a transportation bill that we really needed um, for um, the light that we, actually it's gonna be a roundabout now that we're gonna be putting in for safety for the children. And um, I'm very grateful to Sam for doing that. So um, Sam, I know you're gonna talk about what you're gonna be doing, why don't you come on up, thank you. So good to be here today, uh, Sam Lowe, state rep in the 39th. And uh, I do wanna say what an honor and a privilege it is to work with Senator Wagner. Uh, you know, he lives here in Cedra Woolley and I live in Lake Stevens. It's a very big district and uh, relying on him and his knowledge here has been really helpful. And I appreciate the kind words from the mayor. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I was smart. I didn't wait for happy dollars to talk about my grandchild. I decided to wait till I had the microphone and, and uh, the money t thing was over. So I just had my first grandchild six weeks ago. And so I became granddad and uh, so excited. And my grandchild, my grandson is the cutest one. So, uh, and I don't have to pay for that. Uh, it is important to vote. Uh, you know, Politics isn't fun for, for a lot of people. It's, it gets contentious sometimes. In my Rotary Club, in the Lake Stevens Club, uh, we have the mayor. Uh, uh, we also have several city council members, uh, obviously a state rep, county council member. But uh, we also have our secretary of state, Steve Hobbs, in the same uh, Rotary Club. So we have a very uh, political Rotary Club, but it's not political at all because we're, we're here about serving others and serving our community. And uh, I, before I get into my presentation, I just wanted to say that, that don't ever lose sight uh, of serving our community and service above self. Um, politics, we all have different beliefs when it comes to politics, but that's the great thing about Rotary is we can leave that stuff at the door and, and talk about our community and, and have fun as a community and, and not worry about that political stuff. And, and I say that because I know elections are on Tuesday and we're going to have some good candidates win and we're going to have some good candidates that, that don't win. And uh, we can come back next Thursday and have a great time. And uh, we do it in Lake Stevens. I'm, I'm sure we can do that here in this club. So uh, I guess I can advance this myself. So we'll see what happens. I want to talk a little bit about redistricting because some of you are saying, how did you become our representative? And uh, so I did win the election in Skagit County by two votes last year. 
Uh, so if you, uh, most people don't know that or, or notice that, but if you look at the Skagit County results uh, in the 39th district, I won Skagit County by two votes, uh, but I won in Snohomish County by over 7,000 votes. And so I've been on the ballot many times in Snohomish County, never lost. This was my first time on the ballot here. And so that's probably why it was a lot closer here. But uh, uh, the state has 49 legislative districts, one senator here, Senator Wagner, and then two representatives. They redistrict every 10 years. So these lines shift every uh, 10 years and they, they rebalance it based on population. And the 39th district used to be 20% Skagit County, 80% Snohomish County. After this last redistricting, we became 25% uh, Skagit County, 75%. Uh, Snohomish County. So that's the breakdown of how that works. Uh, there's your uh, two representatives and senator there. Uh, Representative Eslick is on vacation this week, uh, and she's been great to work with, too. I feel very inferior when I'm in the room with those two because they've both done such a fantastic job over the last uh, five years. I did have the opportunity to uh, appoint them both to that position, and I never let them forget that. So in my role on the Snohomish County Council, whenever there's a vacancy, uh, we're able to uh, appoint. And so uh, I got to vote for Senator Wagner to, to fill it in before the election, and the same with uh, Representative Eslick. And again, what a joy to serve with both of them. Um, so there's the 39th district there. Uh, the 12th district is right below us, the 42nd right above course, the 10th uh, to the West. And uh, the reason I show that to you is uh, the district changed by 49.5%. Now, if you look at it on a map, you'd say uh, it looks pretty much the same as it always has looked, but the population has shifted by 49%, 49.5%. And what I mean by that is 49.5% of the voters last year uh, or the previous year uh, were different into this new one. And so uh, into the 39th, and the, the biggest one is uh, Lake Stevens. So Lake Stevens used to be in the 44th district. Uh, now Lake Stevens is in the 39th. We ended up losing Monroe and losing Index and, and uh, uh, most of Sultan and, and uh, losing Gold Bar. And so that's kind of how the, the district shifted. And of course, here in Skagit County, it came a little bit more to the uh, west uh, with that. So that's just, uh, most people don't understand how much the population shifted, uh, how many new voters we had in the uh, 39th that voted in other legislative districts before. Uh, there's my family there. Uh, that's at Lake Stevens where we live. So uh, my wife, Mariah, who's right next to me in the picture, uh, she used to work for the state patrol, a DNA scientist, did that for many years. Uh, she's now the general manager for our sewer district. Uh, in Lake Stevens. Uh, she's incredibly brilliant, incredibly smart, and uh, I'm surrounded by brilliant people in the legislature like Senator Wag Wagner, but I'm also uh, surrounded by uh, extremely uh, brilliant people at home uh, with my wife, Mariah. We are empty nesters now, which is, which is weird. That's because of my gran grandson, Jedediah, uh, was born on uh, September 15th uh, to my oldest daughter, Megan, who is, I got my youngest daughter, uh, and then my oldest daughter, Megan, then my uh, oldest son, Caleb, then Seth, and then uh, Vaden, who is in college in California as the youngest, and our two dogs, Augie and Sarge. And then we have two horses, and that takes up a lot of our time, Dixie and uh, Hazel. And uh, I wish I could share a lot about Dixie and Hazel, uh, how much time they consume uh, out of our schedule. I know our dogs uh, miss the time that they used to have with us because now the horses uh, take most of our time. And I've got the battle scars all over from Clarence sticker bushes and everything else. Um, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I have a master's degree in organizational leadership. Uh, I have a BA in theology. I was a small business owner in Lake Stevens for, for 10 years. I served on the Lake Stevens City Council, where I was council president, uh, the Snohomish County Council, and then uh, obviously state representative in the 39th. And then for those that don't know, I was also president of our Rotary Club in, in Lake Stevens. 
Um, I really work hard on bipartisan legislation. Yes, I'm a Republican. Uh, and yes, the 39th has traditionally been a Republican district, but I work, I really work in a bipartisan way. I truly do. Uh, I really like to work across the aisle. I've done that at the county level very successfully. And then uh, so far I've been very successful at the state level. level. So uh, this year I, I put forward the Oregon Transport Vehicle Bill. Uh, that was a bill that Senator Mullet had for about four years in Olympia, kept going round and round in circles on it. Uh, I took that bill up this year and, uh, and I ran it through unanimous, through you know, unanimous through committee, unanimous through the House, unanimous through the Senate, and then it was signed by the governor this year. And uh, Senator Mullet on the uh, floor uh, said, I've been working on this bill for four years. And by the way, he's running for governor right now, if you didn't know that. But he's like, I've been working on this bill for four years. And then this freshman representative comes and uh, he just runs the table with it and gets it all the way through. And, and the reason I share that is, you know, politics is kind of weird sometimes. You got to be in the right place at the right time, have the right conversations. I did tweak the bill a little bit. Uh, that I thought would be make it more successful. And then I worked across the aisle to get it done. And so some, some of you say, what's the Oregon Transport Vehicle Bill? Well, how does that affect us here? And, and I'm glad you asked that question since you didn't. But uh, the Oregon Transport Vehicle Bill, w whenever somebody uh, is in a car accident or you know, a very tragic situation and, and, and we have the organs, you know, the heart and liver and things like that, uh, They've got to get those right away, uh, and then they've got to transport them to whoever's going to receive them. And so there's a company in Washington, Life Center Northwest, and they are responsible for transporting these organ, uh, these organs that are harvested, uh, and to get them to the right places and the right people. And sometimes they get on airplanes and go to San Francisco or Alaska, or they're coming from Alaska or Idaho or or Colorado, and they're coming here. And then once they get to the airport, then they've got to get them to the hospital or wherever they are harvested here, they've got to get them to the airport from here. And you would be surprised, but they get stuck in traffic all the time. And I think last year they had 7,000 livers go unused because uh, a lot of different reasons, but one of the reasons is they were just sitting in traffic and and expired, they couldn't get them to the people in time. And so, so my bill allows them to have lights and sirens. Uh, it also allows them to use carpool lanes. And, uh, and so they're able to get these organs faster uh, to help people save lives and uh, have lives saved. And uh, it was pretty phenomenal because it became law on July 23rd. And I was at a community event in South Everett with our sheriff deputies and firefighters. And, uh, and we're all standing there and talking and all of a sudden this vehicle comes and this was about two and a half weeks after this became law. Uh, this vehicle, it was a, like an SUV with lights and sirens comes right up 128th street headed towards Painfield airport. And uh, the firefighters are looking at the, the uh, deputies, the deputies are looking at the firefighters and they said, they didn't recognize the vehicle. They didn't, they're like, they thought it was each other's vehicles. And uh, they're like, did you do that? Is that your vehicle? And they're like, no. And, and I said, well, that's actually because of my bill. And then I got to talk about this bill. And it was so cool to see something just two and a half weeks after it became law already being used uh, to help uh, save somebody's life. Uh, I also got the Medal of Valor bill passed uh, through unanimous, uh, which makes it easier if you risk your life to save the life of somebody else. Uh, then you can receive the Medal of Valor. That uh, award's not given out very much because it was very difficult to, to do that. You had to have a joint session of the legislature. So I loosened up all the rules so that they can do that easier. Another bill I worked on was the school recess bill. I got that passed out of the House unanimously, uh, but we have what's called companion bills. And so there was one in the Senate, one in the House, and uh, mine was the House one. The Senate one wasn't unanimous, but that one made it through also, and so then they get to pick. And obviously, being a Republican, they, they picked the Democrat uh, bill, which is fine. Uh, I'm excited we got the bill through. And uh, the bill did become law, and uh, so I got to have a part in, in doing that. And basically, it requires kids to have recess. Um, you, you'd be surprised in some school districts, kids aren't getting recess at all. And uh, they're getting held in, in for recess, 
or the schools are only getting them 10 minutes of recess. This says they get at least a 30 minute break. And I think that's really important. That's only for elementary kids. I think it's really important that our kids get a break. And so uh, really uh, excited to, to do that bill. Um, obviously I can talk, and I had a lot of other bills that got through committee, uh, voted out of committee and, and on the house floor, just didn't have time to vote on them. Those bills will all be eligible this next session to be voted on. Uh, so that's where I get to work every day. Um, and it's an incredible opportunity to serve the public. It really, really is. Uh, you know, Rotary is about serving others. And uh, I really try to take that ro Rotary mentality when I go to Olympia. It's about serving the people. And I really want to serve the people. I don't take that responsibility lightly. Uh, what an honor it is to serve. And, and I want you to know, if you ever come down to Olympia, let us know when you're coming down. Love to uh, show you around, get a picture with you on the floor. Uh, we're in session only 60 days. I think it's on one of my next slides. Um, I'll talk about it now, and if it's on the next few slides, then I'll skip it. But uh, this next session, we're only in session for 60 days. So January 8th to March 8th. So uh, if you go down March 15th, you're probably not going to find Senator Wagner there, and you're probably not going to find me there because we're not in session. Now, I was in Olympia three days last week. Uh, I'll be there a couple of days coming up. Uh, so, so we're hit and miss there. But during session, we're only there. Uh, this year, 120 days. Next year, 60 days. Uh, there's the inside, uh, just a, a beautiful building. Uh, that's the Senate side. Uh, I don't have uh, the representative side, but, but uh, that's basically the same view I have. Um, so there's the legislature. We have 98 members in the House, 49 in the Senate. We each have committees. I have four committees. Uh, I serve on the Transportation Committee. Uh, I'm very well known on transportation issues, so I'm the, uh, what's called the Assistant Ranking on Transportation. Uh, I also serve on the State Transportation Improvement Board, and that's what the mayor mentioned earlier, where I got to help with, with the roundabout, uh, basically saving the city about a million dollars uh, because of my role on that. Uh, but I get to work on transportation issues. I also serve on the Housing Committee. I'm also on State Government and Tribal Affairs. And most of you say, well, what does that have to do with anything? Love working with the tribes, but I also get to work with elections and, and work around election issues. And then I'm also, I have a fourth committee, which is, which is rare because not everybody has four committees. My fourth committee is the Rules Committee. And some of you might say, what is the Rules Committee? Uh, the Rules Committee means that you're everybody's best friend. Uh, that's what that means because the Rules Committee gets to choose which bills get heard on the House floor. Now, I don't get to pick any bill I want. The Speaker of the House, uh, she whittles down that list before I ever get to see it. Uh, so I don't get a pick from any bill, but there's a lot of bills I get a pick from. And so everybody that I work with in Olympia, when their bill's up, they, they all come to me and like, pick my bill, please pick my bill. And so the rules committee is a pretty fun one. Uh, bills have to, have to pass both chambers, uh, the budgets, I think that's the next slide. And then the governor either signs or vetoes your bill. Uh, there's three budgets, operating, transportation, and capital. I spend most of my time working on the transportation budget. Uh, with uh, Chair Fai, and uh, Chair Fai is, uh, is a Democrat. The Democrats are in charge in Olympia, and that's fine. Um, and I just want to say what an honor it is to work with Chair Fai. Um, I have a voice in the room with him. We, we meet on camera where everybody sees our committee of 31, but privately with just the leadership, uh, which I'm a part of being an assistant ranking, uh, we meet uh, even more outside of camera uh, working through the budget. We work on the state patrol budget. We work on the ferry budget, which is a disaster. The budget's not a disaster. I, I don't know. I don't, we're in Rotary, so I don't want to say too much negative about the leadership on ferries, but I want to say negative things, but I won't. Um, <clears throat> uh, but so we work through all those things during session. We start on day one of session working through those budgets. Um, and so I, I, Chair Fi has just been I can share my perspective, he listens. Sometimes he uses my perspective, other times he doesn't, but I always feel like I'm listened to. And I think that's really important uh, for any of us as, as leaders is we might not agree with the other side, but at least listen to them and try to understand their uh, perspective. And I've always felt uh, like that with Chair Phi. Uh, so there's the operating budget and the capital budget. 
Um, all three bills have to pass in the exact, exact form and it's a two year budget cycle. I don't know how long I'm going on time, but I'll take questions at the end for sure. Uh, so there's the amounts, the operating budget, 69.8 billion. The transportation budget is 13.5 billion. Uh, one of the things I wanna see with the transportation budget this year is number one, finish the projects we need to finish, but also we need more for maintenance and preservation of our roads uh, and safety, especially with our bridges, but also when it comes to uh, roadside cleanup, cleanups, uh, these homeless encampments and some of the some of the other stuff like that, we need to get that cleaned up. And then there's the capital budget at nine uh, nine billion, and the capital budget's really important. That makes you everybody's friend too. Uh, that's where we got to to fund things like the uh, crisis stabilization center here in Cedar Woolley. That was twelve point seven million. Uh, that comes out of things like the capital budget. I have a whole list. If I uh, have time, I'll get to it. If not, I'll have to share that at a different time. Uh, 60 day session we talked about, same legislators, same districts, there's the breakdown, 58 Democrats, 40 Republicans in the House, and 29 Democrats uh, and 20 Republicans in the Senate. Um, this next year, uh, it'll just be budget adjustments. Uh, we just adjust the budget because the budget was already voted on this year. And then again, I, I work in a very bipartisan fa uh, fashion. Uh, a couple of questions that people mentioned to me recently is, how do you influence legislative bills? Uh, emails really do matter. They really, really do. But if you send the same email that somebody else sent, I call that a chain email, that doesn't really have much of an effect because we get these different groups, these advocacy groups, and they'll send us 500 emails in one day and all 500 emails say the exact same thing that doesn't have a lot of effect to me and I think most of the legislators, but really what matters is when you put something in your own words and, uh, and whether it's two or three sentences, I think two or three sentences get, get read a lot easier than five or six pages because um, we do get four, five, six, seven, 800 emails in a day. I do all my, all, I do all my own emails, which is different than most, most legislators. Uh, if a constituent emails, I read it, I respond back to it. My assistant will see it, but my assistant won't touch it because, um, because I want to make sure that I personally return those, which right now is easy. I get about 15 emails a day right now, but during session, I'll have several hundred personal emails uh, on bills from people right here in the 39th. And I respond back to every single one as much as possible. If I miss one of yours, it wasn't on purpose. I mean, stuff happens, but I say 99% of the time, I, I personally respond back to you on those. Uh, and the other one is election security. Uh, that's been talked a lot about here in Skagit County. Um, you know, I'm really concerned about what we saw in King County recently with, with a server being changed in the middle of the election. And so uh, I've already been in, in contact with our leadership in Olympia on making sure that it's okay to switch out in the middle, but we need to make sure whatever's being switched out has been tested properly and that um, whatever uh, safeguards are put in there so that Republicans, Democrats, and the public can see that something's been changed and not just stumble across it. So that's probably what I'll say on that for now. And then questions. Um, uh, so that's how, if you go to repsamlow.com, you can kind of keep up on the stuff that I'm working on in the legislator, legislature. Uh, there's my email there. My legislative assistant is Mary Wasaki. Uh, Mary has a human services background. She's phenomenal. She really works hard on issues. She does really well on employment is unemployment issues and, and stuff that comes across. And sometimes we'll get emails to me, Rep Eslick and Senator Wagner. And uh, they'll be addressed to maybe Senator Wagner or Rep Eslick, but I'll ask uh, my assistant to reach out and, and offer help on, on the other offices because Mary is so good and gifted in that area. And then I have my communications uh, person, Nick Jacob, and Nick is here today. Nick, stand up for a second. So there, there's Nick. And uh, Nick drove up from Olympia to be here today. This is kind of his first exposure to, one of his first exposures to Rotary. And uh, so uh, I, he enjoyed singing the song with us. Uh, 
he started to reach for his wallet. I told him that he didn't have to uh, pay any fines today. But uh, once you're a member, if we get you in the club, we're we're gonna get we're gonna get your wallet. But uh, uh, but but seriously, uh, it's, it's, I'm glad that Nick's here. He's gonna be tagging with me today. Uh, I'm, I got some stuff with the city today. Then we're in Darrington for some meetings, and then I'll be with the Grizzly Bear uh, stuff up in Darrington till about nine or nine thirty tonight. So uh, very busy day, and Nick gets to tag along with me today. So any questions out there? I think we got time for a few questions. Wait for the microphone so our, our people online. Hey, thanks for your service. Um, what's coming down the pipe that are hot issues for the next session? Well, obviously a lot of people are talking about the gas tax and uh, the cap and trade. Uh, that one, a lot of people are struggling with, with that. Uh, you know, gas prices are about a dollar more a gallon here in Washington than just across the border in Idaho and Oregon. Uh, I was recently on a bridge tour uh, with, um, with the transportation committee and we started in Kelso Longview. Uh, actually we started in Olympia and we went to Aberdeen first. Then we went down to Astoria and, and looked at the Columbia River Bridge there. Then we came about halfway, took a ferry across back to Washington. Then we got to Kelso Longview, took that bridge. Uh, then we went to uh, Vancouver and that bridge. Uh, and we toured all the bridges right along the Columbia River because some of them are about 100 years old and have to be replaced. And so as we went back and forth between Oregon and Washington, you could definitely tell the difference just by looking at the gas station uh, prices. And so, so that's been a big one that people have talked to me about because a lot of people are struggling right now. Uh, recently, you might have noticed the CARES Act, uh, taking extra money out of your paycheck to, uh, to, to pay for that. Um, so taxes has been real big. Uh, obviously this last session, we dealt uh, a lot with the Blake fix. Uh, drugs were almost legalized on July 1st this year. I don't know if you realize that or not. Uh, we actually finished se session without that being resolved. And so had July 1st came all drugs, meth, everything would have been 100% legal. Uh, we had to go back for a special one day session and and we got a fix. It's not the best fix. I'm happy we have a fix because I didn't want drugs to be legalized. But, uh, you know, we'll probably have some more tweaks to that coming up this year. So there's always stuff to be done uh, with that. But great question. Is there any actual logic to how the districts are numbered? Zero. I was looking at your map and it was just, this is the 39th and this is the 10th and over here's the 8th and there's zero logic to that. Um, there's zero logic to a lot of stuff that happens in Olympia, to be honest. But, um, you know, they, they have uh, four, four people get to decide, two Republicans, two Democrats. They redraw the, the boundaries. It's a, it's a lot of give and take. And sometimes when you do that give and take, it can leave issues. Uh, and when the map was finished, they said the 15th district has issues. And so that's in a lawsuit right now about redrawing the 15th district, which sounds great on to some on the outside, but to fix the 15th district, you're going to have to change about five or six or seven other districts to subtract population, to add population in. So it's going to be quite a mess to be honest. But as far as the numbering system of that, it's just, that's what it is. And that's what it always be. So, I mean, in Lake Stevens, people are frustrated because they're in the 39th now uh, and not the 44th. Or like, we've been in the 44th all this time, and now why do we have to be in the 39th? But I tell them we get a great senator out of it and two great representatives out of it. So that's my message in Lake Stevens. Thanks. Uh, first of all, thanks for the compliments, but nobody in this room thinks I'm brilliant. Uh, <laughs> not even me. Uh, I just want to point out for everybody that effectiveness is important. Sam's predecessor, who was down there for five years like I was, never passed a single bill out of committee. And now you see Sam's record in one session. So uh, personalities matter down there, and it's been a pleasure to work with you. Thank you for your kindness. Now the mayor has a question. I'm in trouble now. No, I am just curious. What is going to be your focus? Is there a certain bill you're going to focus on or a certain issue? I'm just curious what you're going to be focusing on. So, so what I've done is done a listening tour all year after we got out of session. And I keep 
uh, in my phone, I keep a list of all the topics that I talk to constituents about. So constituents will come to me and they'll say, hey, can you fix this for me? Uh, I'm really struggling in this area. So I keep a whole list. And then as I go through the list, uh, right now we're working through that list with my staff. And uh, for example, I had a guy come to me uh, that's struggling with security guards uh, and the licensing with security guards and the high cost. And he said, you know, a lot of these people are all on minimum wage. And then on top of that, they're making minimum wage and having to pay the fee. And so he's like, can you fix that uh, and, and have the company pay the fee instead of these people making minimum wage? Um, it's a great bill. Uh, we're working through it right now and staff's been working on it and they keep giving me questions. And I'm not sure if I'm going to get that one over the hump this year or not, uh, because if, if we do that, if we require it here, we might have to do it for 10 other uh, businesses and uh, groups that they also have to pay their professional license fees. And so, you know, then next thing you know, you get the realtors or whoever else and they're saying, well, why, why don't you make so-and-so pay my fees? And so, uh, so I'm working on that one, working on some transportation uh, stuff also. Um, and so I, you know, I put, I put about 15 different ideas in front of my staff as far as here's, Here's the bills of, of all the ones I've heard this summer. Here's the ones that, that I want to tackle. And then, then we fish that down to about five. And so we're kind of in that process of, of the 15. I'm not sure which four or five will come out of that because sometimes you have a great idea, but there's what's called unintended consequences. And so uh, that doesn't mean I can't run it next year or the year after, but uh, so I'm working on a lot of different bills. And so I could go through my list, but, but I'd rather wait another month or so because we'll start filing uh, the first week in December. And so in the first week in December, uh, legislators and senators will, or representatives and senators will start putting their bills out. And so, so I got about 15 I'm working on, but probably at the end of the day, you'll see about four or five in, in December that, that have made it through the uh, fishing out process. I got another one for you. So one of the best programs that I, as an engineer that does infrastructure work, the state revolving fund loan program uh, that homeowner associations and cities and towns can use. And there's for, for the roads and for water lines and sewer districts and that kind of stuff. Very effective program. Uh, one of the things I'm noticing though, is we're giving away more grant money and it would just be great to me if we, all of money that you seed that program with, if it could just stay in the revolving fund and not give it away so that it's not there in perpetuity. But I'm sure there's politics to that. Uh, so my message is, I think it's a great program when you have a low interest loan that homeowners can take advantage of and fix their infrastructure because the problems are insurmountable otherwise. And the other is, is that if there's anything you could do to make it uh, stay in perpetuity and not give away grant money to the point where you decimate the program from year to year, I would be in favor of that. So what, what you're talking about is the Public Works Assistance Fund, and uh, it's been very helpful, especially for small cities, small counties. Uh, and with the Public Works uh, Assistance Fund, um, they put that out there at, several years ago. I want to say two, three, four hundred million dollars, whatever that amount was, where cities and counties could borrow that money uh, basically for no interest or very low interest, and then they would just pay it back. Uh, very successful, but then, as you know, in 2008, we had the recession, and then we, we had another downtick where, where the revenue wasn't there, and so the legislature swept all that money, and that made it really difficult on our small cities and, and uh, small counties made it difficult on everybody. I'm, I'm very much a, a strong supporter of that. Uh, we need to keep that funded. And I, I like what you said too, where if we just give it all away, then it's gone for good. But if it's, if it's put out there where uh, the cities and counties pay it back, then, uh, then there's money there for other uh, jurisdictions to use too. So it's, it's a good benefit. So I think we have one more. We'll... All right. Last question. Who's going to, oh, there it is. What Senator Wagner just said kind of spurred me on to this question, but I have a little explanation. I had a business in town here for 41 years, scattered surveyors and engineers, and we did a lot of uh, subdivision type work in all four counties. 
And over time, uh, a lot of those people would have to be on individual wells to get a building permit. And as you probably know, there's, there still are portions of Skagit County that are not able to get a building permit with the use of an individual well for domestic water source. For three years, I went down and met in front of the Natural Resource Committee and tried to get that, them to understand that the effect that it had on the Skagit County on the river had been estimated to be nil. If they even had 6,000 wells uh, drilled of the possible portions of Skagit County that could be developed uh, in the rural area. I had no luck at all. They would sit there and shake their heads how, how bad this sounded, but they would never get out of committee. My question is, for those of those that are still in the Skagit Valley that are near a small tributary, that are the ones that are still affected by this rule, and thank God for City Light to come up with a solution for some of the property owners. Some of them are, are past clients and some of them are friends of mine. Is there any effort going to be made to try and free up the rest of the, those landowners in Skagit County to be able to get a building permit on an individual well without numerous restrictions on it? Well, that's a good graduate level uh, question there. So what you're talking about is the Hearst uh, water decision. And uh, obviously I wasn't in the legislature when you were going down there to, to work on that. Uh, I, th I believe Senator Wagner was down there working on it at the time. He would know more about it than I would just because he worked on the issue. Uh, and this is just my first year in the legislature. But uh, I, I was very aware of the Hearst decision. I think it was a terrible decision for Skagit County. Uh, it did fix it for some other counties and help other counties around us, but it was devastating for Skagit County and we're still living with that today. And so we do need to address that decision still. We still need to fix that decision. Uh, you know, and politics is about time and circumstance. So I mentioned about the first bill I passed where they tried for four years and for four years, and Senator Mullet's a very, very good Senator, but for four years, he couldn't get this bill through. And then you had a rookie uh, legislator come through and, and run the tables on it. And, and one of the tweaks I made to that is I made a tweak where Senator Mullet's bill was they had blue flashing lights and the police wouldn't support that because they didn't want more blue lights on the road uh, taken away from law enforcement. And so when I heard the bill and I was researching the bill, I said, why don't we just switch it to a red light? And, uh, and that really was kind of the precursor to get that bill to go all the way through. This one simple change going from a blue light to a red light. So the reason I bring that up with the Hearst decision is time and circumstance, a lot of those legislators have already start, retired from the legislature and started to leave. There's new legislators there. Uh, just this year was 21 new freshman legislators. Um, and we're gonna get more next, you know, the next uh, election. And so I think we need to tackle that issue again in the legislature, maybe tackle it from a different angle and make a little tweak here or there that could be successful for Skagit. Now, I don't know what that tweak is, but I'm all ears. I'm, I'm I'm open to it, happy to come out and meet with uh, people in, your, in the community and, and talk about a fix and work with Senator Wagner on a fix. So I think I'm way out of time, but thank you so much for having me today. And before you leave, remind me and I'll get you a, a world famous pin for your efforts. It's amazing. Almost as good as the old coffee mugs people used to hand out. All right, so I have Christine's closing joke. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson went on a camping trip. After a good meal and a bottle of wine, they laid down for the night and went to sleep. Some hours later, Holmes awoke and nudged his faithful friend. Watson, look up at the sky and tell me what you see. Watson Watson replied, I see millions and millions of stars. What does that tell you? Watson pondered for a minute. Astronomically, it tells me that there are millions of galaxies and potentially billions of planets. 
Astrologically, I've, I observe that Saturn is in Leo. Horologically, I deduce that the time is approximately a quarter past three. Theologically, I can see that God is all powerful and that we are small and insignificant. Meteorologically, I suspect that we will have a beautiful day tomorrow. What does it tell you? Holmes was silent for a minute and then spoke. It tells me that someone has stolen our tent.